Does the operating system really affect the performance, or is it all just a hoax? Well, today we'll find out. I am testing seven operating systems. Windows 11, Windows 11 Super Lite, which is a third-party version of Windows 11, which is lighter weight. Windows 10, Windows 10 Enterprise LTSC, which is a more lightweight but official version of Windows 10. Windows 8.1, which at the time of recording is now unsupported, Linux Ubuntu Mate, and Linux Lite. I am going to be testing all of these operating systems with a few benchmarks. Those benchmarks are Cinebench R23, CPU Z's benchmark, the idle CPU and RAM usage, and how snappy it feels web browsing. I am going to be testing these operating systems on two different computers, both are very slow. One is a Dell Inspiron desktop with a Intel Celeron G470 CPU, which is the fastest and last produced single core CPU. The CPU is on socket LGA1155 and it has one core and two threads at 2GHz. It also has 4GB of DDR3 RAM at 1600MHz and is also single channel to make it a little bit worse. And it also has a NVIDIA Quadro 600 graphics card. The other computer is a eMachine, which has a AMD Athlon LE1640 CPU, which is 1.7 GHz, and it has one core and one thread, and is on the socket AM2. It also has 2 GB of DDR2 RAM at 600 MHz and it's also single channel and the same NVIDIA Quadro 600 graphics card. And I am using the same hard drive and Windows slash Linux install for both computers. The hard drive is a Hitachi, I hope I pronounced that right, H-I-T-A-C-H-I, -H -I, that's the brand. And it is a Desk Star version, which is 160 GB and 7200 RPM, and it was manufactured in February of 2009. Now, to install every operating system, I'm going to only install it on one computer to get the install time. I'm not going to be testing both computers. The computer I'm going to be testing the install time on is the Celeron. I decided to go with the Celeron since it is faster than the Athlon, and I'm going to be doing this a lot. So the first operating system I'm installing is Windows 11 Pro or Professional, and it took 27 minutes to install which is not the slowest install I've ever done, but definitely not the fastest either. I installed this with USB 2.0. To install all of the updates, it took roughly 2.5 hours, so not as long as I expected, but still definitely not that fast. I also went over and uninstalled everything extra that Windows 11 comes with because we don't need it. Anything extra meaning stuff like OneDrive and OneNote and stuff like that. I also made sure to disable every single thing in the system startup to make sure that I don't have any extra apps running that might have started up with Windows that are not actually needed. To restart Windows 11 on the Celeron, it took around 2 minutes. The next benchmark is Cinebench R23. Now, I normally would have this benchmark in the real-time priority in Task Manager, but due to the computer crashing for some reason, I had to go over and take the priority down to high. It still should give the same result, but I did have to change the priority slightly. Either way, the Celeron G470 got a score of 451. CPU-Z is also in the high priority. So, the Celeron G470 got a score of 133 for the single thread and 237.9 for the multi-thread. Web browsing was alright, it was a little bit slower at times, especially on some websites that have a lot of ads, like weather.com, but all in all, it was a pretty usable and acceptable experience for web browsing. And the idle RAM usage on Windows 11 is 1.4GB out of the 4GB available, and the idle CPU usage on the Celeron is 2-3%. And here is the difference between the Celeron and the Athlon in Cinebench R23 and CPU-Z, as well as the idle CPU usage and RAM usage and also how many background processes and Windows processes are in the background. And web browsing on the AMD Athlon was quite sluggish, very sluggish. It was not very fast in the slightest, which is pretty much what I was expecting because this CPU is very not powerful. 
All right, we're on to Windows 11 Superlight now. So, Windows 11 Superlight took 22 minutes and 30 seconds, roughly, to install the operating system, which is still not the fastest install I've ever seen, but also not the slowest one either. So, not bad. On Windows 11 Superlight, there were no Windows updates as they were disabled, so there was no waiting for the entire operating system to do about a dozen updates. It was just ready for you immediately. And in Cinebench R23, in Windows 11 Superlight, the Celeron G470 got a score of 450, and the AMD Athlon LE 1640 got a score of 223. And in CPU-Z, the Celeron got a multi-thread score of 235.3 and a single thread score of 132.3. And the AMD Athlon got a multi-thread score of 89.8 and a single thread score of 89.5. And also here is the idle background Windows processes and Windows processes as well as the idle RAM usage as well as the idle CPU usage for the Celeron and Athlon. And web browsing on Windows 11 Superlight felt identical to web browsing on Windows 11 not Superlight. So like us on both, the Celeron did significantly better than the Absalon, but all in all, it felt basically identical. To install Windows 11 Pro, it took around 28 and a half minutes, which is in fact longer than Windows 11 Superlight and normal Windows 11. Though, that is also mostly due to user error, otherwise it would likely be faster than Windows 11. To install all of the updates on Windows 10, it took around 2 hours and 20 minutes. In Cinebench R23, the Celeron G470 got a score of 450, and the AMD Athlon LE 1640 got a score of 218. In CPUs D, the Celeron got a multi-thread score of 237.6 and a single thread score of 100 and 31.9. The Athlon got a multi-thread score of 88.9 and a single thread score of 88.9. And also here is the idle CPU usage, the idle RAM usage, and the idle processes in the background as well as the Windows processes. And when it comes to web browsing with the Celeron and Athlon on Windows 10, it felt basically identical to Windows 11 and Windows 11 Superlight. To install Windows 10 Enterprise LTSC, it took around 21 minutes, and to complete all of the Windows updates, it took around 2 hours and 7 minutes, so slightly faster than Windows 10 Pro. In Cinebench R23, the Intel Celeron G470 got a score of 450, and the AMD Athlon LE 1640 got a score of 213. In CPU-Z, the Celeron got a single thread score of 131.3 and a multi-thread score of 237.0. And the Athlon got a single thread score of 88.6 and a multi-thread score of 93.8. And also here is the idle CPU and RAM usage. And also I lost the idle Windows processes in the background, I don't know where they went or if I even recorded them. And when it comes to web browsing, the Athlon and the Celeron feel basically identical to all the other operating systems I've tested so far. It might have been ever so slightly faster, but that's just going off of the Cinebench R23 and CPU Z scores being ever so slightly higher than the other ones. But really, honestly, it felt the same. Windows 8.1 took around 1 hour to install, and that is actually very much due to user error. I was having some trouble installing Windows 8.1, so that is why it took so long. Now, it took around 3 hours to install Windows updates, including the time of installing Windows. So, about 2 hours for Windows updates, and about 1 hour to install Windows. So, not great. On Windows 8.1, on Cinebench R23, the Celeron G470 got a score of 459, and the AMD Athlon got a score of 247. In CPUs, the, the Celeron got a single thread score of 139.9, and a multi-thread score of 243. And the Athlon got a single thread score of 97.8 and a multi thread score of 97.9. And also, here is the idle CPU usage and idle RAM usage. And I also forgot to record the background Windows processes in Windows 8 as well. Sorry about that. I don't know how I forgot, but I did. And when it comes to web browsing, I did notice Windows 8.1 did feel a little bit faster than all the other operating systems. 
but not by much, it still was pretty much the same. And also, on Windows 8.1, on Google Chrome, it is now giving me an error saying that Google Chrome is not getting any updates anymore because Windows 8.1 is out of support. And I do find that somewhat disappointing that Windows 8.1 is out of support because it is a really nice operating system, especially for older and slower computers. Windows 8.1 also has a lot of support for the newer apps as well versus like Windows 7 for example. Like, you can open more stuff up on Windows 8.1, so it has more features than the older operating systems, but it still does suck that it is now unsupported. At least you can still use it though, but that's just my two cents on it. The next operating system is Ubuntu Mate, and it took around 31 minutes to install, which is one of the longer install times on the list so far. And there was no updates to do, it was already ready to be used, at least as far as I'm aware. Unless there's updates that I don't know how to find, which very well could be a thing, because I do not know how this operating system works, I've never used it. And to add to that, I've never really used Linux before either. And for the benchmarks on Linux Ubuntu Mate, and the next operating system which would be Linux Lite, I have to cut back on the benchmarks a little bit, because the benchmarks I've been using do not work on Linux, which is CPU-Z and Cinebench R23, but I still can do the idle CPU usage and idle RAM usage. So on Linux Ubuntu Mate, the idle CPU usage is 5-6% on the Celeron, and 14-18% on the Athlon. And for the idle RAM usage, the Celeron used 0.8 out of 4GB, and for the Athlon it used 0.7GB out of 2GB. And when it came to web browsing, it felt basically identical, if not a little bit slower to all the Windows counterparts. And to install Linux Lite, it took around 29 minutes and 16 seconds, so a little bit faster than Linux Ubuntu Mate, but still not very fast. Once it was installed, it looked like it wanted me to do some updates, and I tried to do some updates and uh, didn't seem to do anything. So I'm going to go off the presumption that there is no updates that need to be done on Linux Lite. And the idle CPU usage for the Celeron on Linux Lite was 3 to 5 percent, and for the Athlon it was 9 to 11 percent, and for the idle RAM usage it used 0 0.8 out of 4 gigabytes for the Celeron and 0 0.6 out of 2 gigabytes for the Athlon. And when it comes to web browsing, I cannot give you a valid answer on if it's faster or slower. The reason why is the internet went out when I was testing Linux Lite and I was limited to 0.3 Mbps internet or 300 kilobits per second, which is by no means fast and also by no means a very accurate idea of how fast it is at web browsing since it is internet limited and not CPU limited. And here is the total results for Cinebench R23. I am actually somewhat surprised about this. I was expecting Windows 10 LTSC to be one of the best performing ones, if not Windows 11 Superlight, but nope, Windows 8.1 beat everything by a pretty considerable amount. And for CPUs, the I am also somewhat surprised. So, Windows 8.1 came pretty far ahead of every other operating system once again, which is just sort of showing how easy to run that operating system is. The scores aren't all that much different, but like, compared to Windows 10 and 11, the difference between Windows 8 and Windows 10 is significant, but the difference between Windows 10 and Windows 11 is not near as big. If anything, Windows 11 is a little bit faster than Windows 10. So, for the idle RAM usage, the winner for the 2GB of RAM range is Windows 8.1 using 0.5GB out of 2GB, and for 4GB of RAM, Linux Ubuntu Mate and Linux Lite both came in on top using 0.8GB out of the 4GB available. And the operating system that came in first place when it comes to the idle C CPU usage by far is Windows 8.1. Every operating system is a lot higher usage, and for some reason, Linux Ubuntu Mate did a very bad job because it was using 18% of the CPU at idle on the AMD Athlon, which is absurdly high. So, which operating system do I recommend going with? Well, it depends. So, 
If you don't mind not having any virus support or anything like that, I would recommend going for Windows 8.1. It performed better than all the other operating systems overall, and it was a pretty nice experience. And if you want to use Windows, and you want virus support and updates, I would have to recommend going for Windows 11, because Windows 11 ran just fine, and it actually slightly outperformed Windows 10 it seemed. And don't bother going with Windows 11 Superlight because there could be some security issues with that operating system and also it didn't really give you much of a performance gain anyway. So I would really just recommend going with Windows 11, plus Windows 11 will get updates for a longer period of time than Windows 10. And I should add, I also had to bypass the minimum requirements for Windows 11 as both of these computers do not meet the minimum requirements of a TPM and uh, some other things that Windows 11 requires. And when it comes to Linux, I cannot really recommend Linux Ubuntu Mate or Linux Lite, at least for a Windows user. Though I do know there are a lot of people who like using Linux, I just honestly don't really care for the experience all that much, at least from my limited experience with it. And it performed basically the same, if not a little bit slower than Windows anyway, so... Yeah, that's just my thoughts on it. And also, with the high idle CPU usage, I think that might just be because of the system monitor, which is like task manager for Windows 10. The system monitor updates a lot more, it seems, on Linux, so that could have been why the CPU usage at idle was so high. But it is really hard for me to give a certain operating system the crown of the best performing. Because yes, Windows 8.1 hands down, is the fastest. But it does have some security flaws now that it isn't getting updates. And if you want the fastest operating system that is being updated, I would have to go with Windows 11 here. Because overall, it was the fastest Windows operating system that was being updated, Plus, it has a lot more support compared to Windows 8.1, and Linux is a pretty hard operating system to recommend, as it has a pretty steep learning curve it seems, and most of the general public uses Windows, and almost every Windows operating system is similar enough to where you have a good idea on how to use it. But if you're using Linux, for example, and you're trying to use a Windows operating system, a lot of people won't know how to go over and use those Windows operating system apps on Linux. There are ways, but there's just a lot more loops you have to go through to do it. Either way, I hope this video was at least somewhat informative to you. If it was, could you leave a like? If so, that would be absolutely amazing. Either way, thank you so much for watching, and have a nice day.